good evening all of you so today we have uh, manchit chaudhry with us he is an actuarial analyst and he is working in a general insurance domain so today uh, we have kept this session um where we'll be decoding cp1 cp2 and cp3 with manchit and he has cleared all of these three papers in his first attempt um so let us just quickly uh, go back to manchit and let's ask him what was his strategy and how he planned his cp series paper along with job so i'll share the screen and uh, before proceeding with the session i would request all of you to please keep yourselves in mute and you all can uh, switch on your cameras and if you all have any questions post it up in the chat box and we'll take it up towards the end of the session uh, thank you manchit now you can uh, start the session i'll just share the screen um yes is my screen visible Manjit, is it visible? You'll have to unmute yourself. Uh, I hope everybody in the call can hear me and they can yes. see the screen also. Yes, yes, yes. So thanks for having me here. Uh, so first of all, like I just consider myself incredibly lucky, just having cleared these three papers. So just to tips up, I'm not way too knowledgeable about all these papers. I'll just try to do my best to explain. what my experience has been so first of all coming to cp series in particular i think it's it's a, these papers are something that challenge a very different perspective compared to what cscm or cb have done previously so as already mentioned by the name it's particularly going to challenge how well you communicate so communication is just not is just not about when you talk to people it's also about your written communication and how well you think about it So CP one in particular is going to challenge you a lot on that front. It's about how you think and how you drive your entire thought process. The very key fact that I have noticed about CP one is that people need to accept that it's a really challenging. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a really challenging paper, and that you will be challenged while you prepare for it. So this is something that I personally faced, like. having recently joined the industry as a as a full time employee so i was put under immense pressure by this paper in the last few months of my preparation so there were nights where you know i slept barely 2 3 hours and had to wake up go to office complete key deliverables then come back have my dinner have my have some snacks and then sit back to study again study the entire night and then continue the cycle over So yes, it's an. I would not soften the blow for any one of you. It's incredibly challenging, and I think that is what makes the paper incredibly rewarding. Also, in a way, I think the very challenge that it puts forward is very important for us to you know succeed in it. Like the satisfaction you get if you clear this paper is immense, and I think that is the entire point of the hard work that you need to put in. So now, just to give you like brief pointers about how I planned myself during the preparation cycle. so after one month going through the revision notes once and the chapter wise materials that acted has it was very clear to me that this is not just about remembering each and every word by heart because just remembering 40 chapters worth of content is not possible it's just not a practical thing to do so what you need to do is you need to build upon your thought process like for example if if you are being asked a question in a particular exam style scenario you need to be able to think on the spot it's not about whether you know 15 points or 20 points per question from beforehand you would not technically on a 10 mark question let's say you would write around 20 to 22 points to score good enough marks however even if you do the best of prep the materials that you would actually use would not even have let's say 15 pointers in it so this difference is something that you need to bring up using your own experience using what you have read from different sources so this is something that i used to do a lot maintain a very strong log of pointers for each topic for example my key strength was general insurance and finance and economics so i kind of made this my forte where my target was to score about 75 to 90% of the marks on any question asked on these topics and my weak areas were pensions and let's say life insurance since i have no working experience in these two industries 
I feel quite challenged in the concepts that they ask, in what data play comes in, in what modeling questions would come in. So those became incredibly challenging for me. And my target was that I need to score a minimum. I just need to score fifty percent on these questions. If I'm able to maintain this ratio of scoring fifty percent of my weak areas and around seventy five percent to eighty percent on my stronger areas. i think you would be incredibly comfortable over the course of the two papers so yes capitalize on your strengths and also don't try to be too weak on your weaknesses it's just that understand that there you would have weak areas and that is okay if you are being tested on 40 chapters it is expected that let's say seven or eight chapters would be a weak area for you and as long as you can accept this fact you're going to be great put more focus towards where you feel uh, it needs to be there for example while preparing in the later stages around august and september to start i did not focus too much on the finance and economic concepts because i am an economics graduate i have already done a lot of those so i am able to think on spot if i am asked a question about exchange rates on interest rate on foreign trade on regulations so those are my strength areas and i am incredibly comfortable around it so that was one key takeaway that i took away that i took focus on the areas focus your key areas that you need to put a lot of attention on so that would be i think a great great uh, feedback for me on the your preparation process uh again so when i talk about cp1 it's also important to keep practicing past questions and reading solution i think this is something that is incredibly important i think instead of going through the chapter wise materials twice or thrice it would be better if you focus on the assets the revision notes and the flash cards as well so if you are able to take out time to do all three of those incredible but if you can't i think prioritize your revision notes and assets definitely because they have answers in a very structured format given over there it's uh, so any detail about any question is mentioned in the right keywords with the right sentences in the right language so they give you a lot of perspective on how you should frame your answer and not just what should be in your answer so i think that is very important now coming to the other points i think so when you identify that let's say a particular topic is a key area that is questioned quite frequently in exams or is something that a weak zone don't just limit yourself to the acted material try looking at different papers or data research papers that are present online look at different articles of ifoa and i'm sure if you just search a lot of keywords on google or any on even youtube you would find a lot of videos a lot of uh, information that you can collect and just keep it for your general knowledge so particularly in the recent times i have seen new topics like new concepts like cyber cyber risk climate change cryptocurrency energy sector these are going to be incredibly important because these are relatively newer additions to the syllabus so if you are not focusing on it i think you are just missing out on a huge huge area that could be exploited during the exams so i think keep updated about this and also you would notice is that in the materials that ifoa provides these topics are not very widely covered you would not find a lot of elaborate points so i think going outside the uh, institute's material or the i or the indian institute's material is incredibly important so again focus on that focus on these areas as well uh coming to attempting mocks i think cp1 is a paper in which you need to do a lot of exam style prep uh and you need to give mocks also so i was lucky enough that my company uh helped me uh appear for the acted mocks that we have so after going through those acted mock uh, acted mocks and how the examiner has marked i was able to realize where i was going wrong especially in the flow of my language how my answers were flowing so earlier i used for example earlier i used to focus on very paragraph style of writing however after going through the marker's comments and where i have not been marked adequately i realized that a point style answer format is way way more important so that is something that i took away and it incredibly helped the way i answered questions and i looked to structure my thought basically uh now a few last pointers that i would like to give you for the cp1 exam is that please form study groups and have peer reviewers so your study groups could be your colleagues your friend people from your tuition just have let's say in half an hour 45 minute session every day at night or whenever it's convenient for all of you 
talk between yourselves on important questions discuss different pointers that could go in i think that would help you also come up with a lot more new ideas since let's say if i am if i am the only one looking at one particular question i would have a very limited uh, opinion of it i would maybe give you 10 12 points that i can share about it but let's say if i talk to two three other people about it and we discuss it together i think they could easily add another 10 15 points to my arsenal for the future so i think peer groups are incredibly important my i myself prepared with a few of my colleagues from work and as well as a few of my friends from my college days so that really really helped me grow my knowledge and also gain a lot more perspective uh, for each question especially of my weak areas like pensions and life insurance uh, again coming to how you should present your answers i believe you, it's important that you break your answers into smaller sections basically so let's say if you are asked uh, disadvantages and advantages of a particular issue try to look at disadvantages and advantages of that issue to different stakeholders for example let's say let's say you are being asked what is the advantage of using a standard of internal model over a standard model very simple question very frequent question that is asked in cpy instead of just writing one paragraph or let's say 10 pointers directly on advantages of it try to break it into five pointers each five pointers for advantages of an internal model five disadvantages of a standard model so what this would do is this would help you break down your thought process into smaller chunks and then the recall and the retention that you gain from that is incredibly strong it's incredibly strong uh again when you answer questions in the exam ensure that you are highlighting keywords mentioning each pointer in different lines in different each in different lines they should be adequately highlighted if necessary what this essentially does is the marker would not skip over a particular area that you have mentioned or would not forget to mark a particular area so this is also very important that you underline underline words as you go uh work on your typing skill because again papers have been come the recent papers have been really really long really lengthy and it's been a struggle to complete about 95 to 90% of the paper it's been really challenging i myself wasn't able to complete let's say around 6 to 7 marks of the paper one so yes time yourself really well during the start of the exam uh coming to specifically for paper 2 i think for paper 2 it's really important that you focus on assets now why i say assets is because assets have answered the solutions in a way that guides your thought process it basically tells you what you should have been thinking while reading a question or while attempting a question so that adds a lot of value i don't think this is something that is covered either in the chapter wise uh, uh material that we have or in the revision notes so assets again very important for people to i think these were the main strategies for cp1 in particular that i used so now let's move over to cp2 so uh am i audible yes uh, yes you are i think you are audible uh all right so i think my screen just froze okay so um, before moving ahead to cp2 let's cover a few questions for cp1 okay so manjit okay. tell us uh, so you have already covered various points as to how you uh, planned your studies now uh, the syllabus is really huge it's really vast so tell yeah. us how many months uh, you actually gave to cp1 and what should be the ideal time period for cp1 as a student and as a working mm -hmm. professional oh uh, if you are attempting cp1 as a student i would definitely recommend you to start at least four four and a half months in advance but let's say if you are attempting it as a working profession and it's your first attempt then i think it's good to start around 6 months before because what would happen is within those 6 months you would have a lot of deadlines a lot of regulatory submissions that come in especially around let's say the months of jan to march it's going to be incredibly challenging and people generally face a lot of issue during these uh, during quarter one of a year particularly to prepare the study pattern properly so for working professions definitely 6 months start off with your material uh, start reading of your material definitely try to complete it within 3 to 4 weeks i think it's achievable 
and then move on to a mixture of a sets and revision notes and also keep revising on the material because the recall and retention is the main challenge in this paper if you have let's say around 2000 2500 pages worth of content and you you are asked to recall all of those in a 3 hour exam it's important that you keep uh, building your retention ability and also your recall the ability to recall is very important right so um six months is i think approx uh, should be the um, best time uh, to prepare now next is um how do you summarize the whole syllabus so as you mentioned uh, mm -hmm. we have approximately 2000 or more than that of worth of content given to us yeah. and it's complete theory so mm -hmm. uh, we have a different approach you used to you know uh, just to retain uh, the content uh so one of the main uh, so let's say one of the main uh, methods i used to retain this information was i ensured that i created a separate copy like basically a summary copy in a way for cp1 which had pointers for all important topics so let's say if i had general insurance so what could be the possible data requirements in general insurance what are the different assumptions that can be done what are the different challenges that let's say one particular sector would be facing so i had this complete log of uh, pointers that i could easily look go to for a quick revision and going through those pointers would just you know just help me make my own recall and drive my retention of keywords basically because let's say if i am able to recall keywords i am able to construct a sentence a uh, sentence on it around it during the exam so as long as i can recall let's say 10 to 15 keywords per answer i think i am in good hands to cover sufficient number of points during the exam right so that is very important to remember the keywords because if you're just writing a very general uh, mm -hmm. answer you might not get marks so you should be very specific to the question uh, that is also very important okay so next Definitely. question is uh, how can one this is actually very important how can one manage uh, cp1 with job so you have already given us mm -hmm. a lot of points but how should be uh, how should we be very consistent because i have seen um, when we are working we usually get a little bias that we cannot miss our office we, we have we cannot leave mm -hmm. early so how to manage work and uh, the cp1 paper together oh uh, to answer this yes it's challenging like even i faced this issue when i so uh, was preparing for cp1 like managing my commitment towards work and studies so if you are an employed profession you have to accept that work is going to be your first priority maybe during the few weeks leading up to the exams you might be allowed to prioritize your exam or your exam otherwise it's going to be all work for you so what i usually did was whenever i was in office i used to stay back let's say an additional 2 hours 3 hours beyond what i was working to just study because what happened was when i saw people around me were working and they were just focused on what they were doing this entire environment over there was very comfortable for me to focus on academics so i would have people beside me just sitting working on their files and uh, having calls or meetings and i would be solely focused on the book in front of me because just because since people are around i am not going to waste time in office so those 2 3 hours were possibly the most productive uh, for me in my uh, like my preparation on a daily basis right so that's a good point or uh, that see it depends again uh, but i think yes uh, you have to uh, whatever time you can take out be it 2 yeah. hours or 3 hours you have mm -hmm. to be completely focused uh, because Definitely. you cannot waste those 2 3 hours it's actually a lot you can take out uh, being a Definitely. working professional uh, right so another thing uh, is that how um, taking tuitions or coaching help you clear cp1 mm -hmm. uh so how was that another boost for clearing cp1 so if you talk about my experience like i did not have a lot of practical knowledge while preparing for cp1 since i have recently started working so just having the comfort of knowing that there are trainers and let's say people who are there to support you when you have doubts and ready to provide pointers or ready to provide their perspective through the experience that they have so let's say if you're opting for a trainer or any tuition so you would definitely have someone who's more experienced with cp1 and they'll definitely help you save up on time like you wouldn't have to uh, 
look for where you want to find your content where you need to find information from what you need to prepare they'll guide you through it so it saves up a lot of time in your planning process which you can devote to actually studying rather than just planning on it so that becomes important all right so that's great now um next thing is how to utilize the weekends because it's very important mm-hmm. uh being a working professional to utilize the weekends properly and not carried away with the different activities mm-hmm. so how you managed and planned your weekends uh so on weekends it's also important to give you a break so let's say if you are preparing for let's say people like ct1 for 6 months by the time you have already prepared for let's say 3 to 4 months it would already start affecting you on your mental level and it and just to maintain a lot of your sanity you just need to give yourself also a break on the weekends so yes do go out or uh, do if you if you are into exercising and some physical sports do go for those activities i think they give you an incredible break and just those 2 3 hours of break would actually help you focus a lot more during the times that you are actually studying so don't put too much pressure on yourself on the weekends to study but yes of course don't miss studying on the weekends that's the only time i think you can solely focus on that, on it okay so we can balance out maybe 4 5 hours of study and rest we can definitely do give uh, definitely. to other activities yeah on so weekends, um, i think 4 to 5 hours is a minimum i think you should target ideally around 7 to 8 hours and then maybe 2 okay. 3 hours of whatever fun activity you want to do for yourself Right, right. So for CP one, definitely six or uh, seven to eight hours. Definitely. Definitely. Oh. Definitely. Yeah. So how to make a study uh, schedule? Now this mm-hmm. is very important because when we uh, start pl- uh, preparing for any paper and CP one being such a vast paper, we usually uh, don't understand how to plan our study a uh, study schedule. So how mm-hmm. how did you prepare your uh, study schedule? So what I would usually do is I used to. Uh, only plan out for the next for the coming two to three weeks. I would not pre- uh, plan out something for let's say three or four months at one stretch, because I know there would be stuff that comes up during that time and it would just ruin the entire plan that I have. So I just used to plan two weeks in advance, and I would have let's say let's say I want to cover chapters ten and eleven tomorrow. So I would have them on my to-do list, and the fact is, if I maintain this kind of a list or a log. Until and unless I take them off on a daily basis, I don't get the satisfaction to go back to sleep or let's say to just skip studies. So as long as you can put yourself in that zone where you are, you know, focused towards studying and meeting your objectives, I think you will be good enough to go. Right. So um, that is a very good point that you should take off the work that you have done and the study that you have done uh, during the day. um so yes now we can move to cp2 and cp3 and then towards the end we can have uh, the questions by other students all right so i'll just say, share the screen again oh yeah it's visible Yes, Manchit, you can start. Yeah, I don't think the PPT is visible, right? Yeah. So particularly for to CP two, I think CP two is gonna challenge you a little on the Excel front. So what I have generally noticed in the past few terms is that paper one has usually had an easier Excel form, and easier has been a little easier on the Excel. uh because of the weight of excel in it but paper 2 has around i think 30 to 35 marks that gets challenged on excel so having so those are really tricky parts and they actually required a lot of thinking and clarity from you in order to solve the question that is at hand so it's important that you gain a lot of exposure to what kind of questions are asked and what kind of excel knowledge is required in the exam so i think if you are able to practice the last 10 terms worth of practice papers both paper 1 and paper 2 i think you should be incredibly com- comfortable in your own ability both preparing the audit trail and the summary as well as working on an excel file uh another thing ensure that you do at least one question from each topic now when i talk about topics 
so in cp2 you would generally notice like you have different sections so let's say you might have a problem from general insurance life insurance pensions you might have something related to investment and finance or something related to profitability and businesses so ensure that you have at least one question worth or one paper worth of experience experience of attempting those so those are really important or uh, so this is really important to ensure again while attempting the word documents that is the summary file and the audit trail ensure that you focus most on the results and the observation as they carry the most marks a very huge component of your overall marks would actually flow in from the results in the summary file so it's important that you devote time according to the marks that are allotted to it and don't get too mixed up in the methodology while answering let's say the audit trail so i made this mistake while attempting the cp2 uh, paper 1 i focused way too much on the methodology component rather than focusing on the important bits like assumptions data use so i lost a few marks over there but thankfully i was able to recover it because my paper 2 went well or uh, my another suggestion would be to stick to the formats that you see in let's say the specimen solutions that are shared by ifoa so if you look at the summary uh, you if you look at the summary file and the audit trail there are very strict formats and very strict guidelines that are generally used in terms of your flow of your entire answer as well as flow within each paragraph so try to stick to that again while working on excel i think you should break down the problems into multiple steps and if possible don't over complicate one particular cell or one particular column by preparing the solution try to show them over multiple columns because what it does it it makes the markers job easier to understand the logic that you have tried to implement or what your thought process have been use as simple formulas as you can like genuinely don't if you if you are thinking of using a sum product i would say it's better to create two columns and then add like add them back together so instead of using a sum product function directly make two columns of the two vector of the two vectors and then you do a total on it so that is something that is really important don't get too locked up into using fancy formulas and complex stuff because those are barely going to come in and you would just be focused too much on excel stuff rather than solving the problem at hand since most of you might be experienced profession i i think most of you would understand when i say this it's important to deliver the solution rather than which formula is driving that solution so as long as your solution is right i think you are good to go don't be concerned ki whether you are adding a few extra columns a few extra rows a few extra cells i think those won't be a big matter in it uh coming to the presentation part add in add in a lot of add in a lot of comments and notes where you feel it is necessary wherever you feel that you have mentioned or calculated a value add in add in on the adjacent cell what it reflects what the value actually is whether it's the total profit whether it's like the total uh, discount that you have given whether the total revenue that you have calculated what exactly is the value you need to mention that either as a note or ideally in the cell adjacent to it so make sure you do that again ensure that each column has the adequate headings headings should be very clear and concise and should communicate what exactly has been done uh highlight the cells that have checks in it this becomes very important number formats very important don't mention years as a decimal number mention them as only let's say if you're mentioning 2022 make sure that you present it as 2022 and not 2022.00 these are very minor things but they actually make a lot of difference in the overall presentation as well as your diagrams and graph i think adding borders adding grid lines ensuring that you have access titles uh, the graph headings makes your presentation incredibly neat also ensure that the graph is of the right size don't make it too large that it can't be viewed on a single screen or too small that a that the marker has to zoom in on it to view it so that is really important and ensure that each question that you attempt is on a separate tab because what happens is while preparing the audit trail or summary file it becomes easier for you to go question wise and not look into one particular tab which might have way too many columns and would take up a lot of your time yeah uh 
so yes as i already mentioned like cp2 and cp2 paper 1 i spent way too much time preparing the methodology component of audit trail wherein i lost a lot of marks explaining each cell what was happening so this is something that i recognized during the exam where i was going wrong and i immediately moved over to the more important components over there and got them ticked off first so time management during the exam is really important since you have to attempt both excel and word and even within word it's a very long document that you have to prepare of around 2000 3000 words so yes it's very important uh coming to the coming to uh the exam style uh, what difficulties you might face during the exam so it's important that you read each and every question very very thoroughly because what happens is if you read it only once or if you give it a very brief reading you might have actually skipped over what is actually asked so let's say you have been asked let's say the profit percentage but you forgot to read the percentage sign or let's say you did not remember the percentage sign you just calculated the profit so what would ultimately happen is you would lose out on a lot of marks just because you could not give them in the percentage format as they asked for so those are really important uh another issue that i faced during the exam was when i downloaded the excel sheet that they had uh they shared during the exam the sheet was locked in manual mode in calculation so i lost around 15 20 min- minutes figuring out since at that time i didn't know this manual and automatic formula calculation settings so keep this in mind this is something that i terribly uh i made a terrible blunder on so this is something i would advise everybody should keep in mind and lastly coming to excel shortcuts i think don't get too worked up if you don't use a lot of excel shortcuts i myself still haven't been into the habit of using excel shortcuts and i find it really inconvenient for me to use but yes if you do use excel shortcuts i know a lot of people do save up a lot of time doing that so it's not something that i would say you need to work on just for cp2 if you do use excel shortcuts you should use them because it reduces the time you take in attempting any question uh so coming to cp3 so again cp3 is the paper that i think cha- tests you more on how well you communicate formally through words and how structured your thought process is while answering questions or while uh providing a solution to a problem so my so when attempting any mock or any practice paper for cp3 i was very focused on the fact that i need to maintain a cause effect relationship within any pointer that i am mentioning so what essentially a cause and effect relationship to explain it uh, to you all with an example so let's say in the september 22 attempt there was a question asked on the difficulties that insurance companies were facing due to the pandemic so how i would technically frame an introduction part of it was i would first mention that 2022 was a difficult year because of the pandemic so the cause was that 22 year 2022 was a difficult year or uh, was a pandemic year which caused some difficulty this difficulty also crept into the insurance industry becomes another effect of it now this also caused my company to lead up into some difficulties so this establishes a very structured flow of information from you to the person that you're communicating with and it really helps you figuring out the ideal uh, an optimum answer Uh, in the minimum possible words so this is something that i really uh, suggest to you guys to follow is a cause effect relationship while answering questions don't mention anything without at without having mentioned a cause for it and if you are mentioning let's say a particular event that happened or a particular activity that happened mention what were the effects of it so i think this is in very very important uh coming to the formats that you have so in cp3 you would generally have let's say three kind of questions mainly an email a letter or a draft paper for any meeting or a pre meeting draft paper is something that would be required so make sure that you are very very confident and very sure of the formats make no mistake on this and at least it's around i think 10 to 12 marks that you can that's an easy score on this aspect coming to the form, uh, language that you use ensure that your language is formal don't use very long sentences try to restrict your sentences to a maximum of 12 to 15 words what it does it it also 
allows you to focus a lot more on using good language and it also does not allow you to flow in a lot of information in one go so this is very important while answering it stick to the main problem if the question is going to be very particular in terms of the answer they expect from you and the content that you need to mention ensure that that is maintained uh, so let's say uh, in cp3 you are expected to write around 800 to 900 words so what i would usually or uh, target is that i need to complete my paper within 875 words i think 875 is kind of the ideal uh, area to be in it's neither too less information nor too much information for you to complete so that is important and within those 875 words maintain a very consistent flow of writing style and information don't en ensure that you don't repeat points that you have already covered beforehand because it simply takes away from additional information that you could have provided over there so that becomes really important uh could we go over to the next slide yeah uh, again as already mentioned during cp2 your graphs and diagrams need to be very well prepared and very well presented and on the data files that you receive beforehand you could also even try to prepare graphs pre uh, from before so that you don't have to waste or utilize time during the exam to prepare those particular graphs it could come in handy so it's good to have them prepared beforehand uh again as i already mentioned earlier for cp1 and cp2 both divide your solutions into different parts and make different paragraphs for each it really helps drive your own thought process and it makes it really convenient for you to give very concise and very accurate answers so this is something that really helped uh again one important point that i think people usually miss while answering cp3 is in their conclusion they should mention a line or two offering additional help so let's say in case of additional queries that you may have please contact me at so and so email id or so and so in person can also help you the, these minor things would get you those additional two marks three marks that eventually prove to be the difference between a passing and a failing mark so that becomes very important for question 2 on cp3 i think it's really if you could score around 7 to 8 marks on the last 10 marks that are uh, that you are asked for i think it makes your entire experience really convenient so what i would usually suggest it go over the past 10 to 12 terms worth of papers and make a list of pointers that have been mentioned in the solutions that dip that ifoa provides i think they would adequately cover all the range of questions that could be asked and for each question what is the scope of the answers that you can write so i think that is really important in uh, and again as already mentioned form your peer groups and have mentors so let's say when you practice a particular paper have one of your friends or one of your seniors evaluate it maybe just a 10 minute read they would be able to point out so many improvements and advancements on what you could do that it really makes the process a lot convenient for you so when i was preparing for cp2 and cp3 i had a friend with whom i used to sit on video calls we would generally complete our papers and attempt them within the video call and then look at each other solution and deliberate with the other person on whether this is something that we can do or this is something that we need to improve on so that entire process really helped me grow my ability to answer a cp3 style question so i think that is all the strategy i had for cp2 cp3 that i could cover but if you guys do have question i'm happy to answer them in the call hi manchit this is kavita here hi kavita hi hi manchit i have a question on cp3 so i have yes. taken cp3 twice before okay um and uh, you know every time i was short of like just a couple of marks mm -hmm. um and i have followed every step like i have done all the past papers both the times when i took the exam okay i uh you know like uh, st structuring the whole thoughts mm -hmm. uh before writing the exam dividing the solutions adding conclusions taking care of the format Uh, right. everything everything mentioned mm -hmm. there but still like i'm always like short of two marks or three marks you know and now i have lost ways of you know what more i can do more what more i can do yeah. than this you know it it yeah. seems like a very challenging mm -hmm. exam 
Um, so what I would uh, so have you had a look at your marks breakup that IFO usually provides and identified? Is there a like a consistent or area that you have been losing marks on? I so, haven't really okay. analyzed. Uh, I have seen the breakup, but I haven't uh, really analyzed the paper section so, wise. So I think you should focus on doing that because, again, like I would not exactly know what your writing style is. So maybe your writing style might not be suited to what the answer would have required. So if you could analyze, let's say you're right, whether you are losing your marks in your writing style or what content you're driving or your presentation, I think you would identify the key areas that you can focus on, let's say in your next attempt. So, and again, like if it's a matter of two to three marks, I think prioritize preparation for question two, I think. I think you could easily gain a few marks over there and that would push you over the line. I'm very, very certain on that. Okay, sure. Thanks. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, correctly point pointed out by Manchit that Kavita might be uh, so because I have seen a lot of uh, marking distributions of CP3. Students generally lose a lot of marks in the second question, which is of 10 marks. They either score two or three in that where they can easily score six to seven marks, eight marks. And that depends. You have to just keep some uh, keywords ready with you for the re uh, second question, reflective questions. So that is also very important. So yes, Manchit, uh, now I have a few questions for CP2 and CP3. Uh, so um, very important question that should one uh, give both the papers together or separately? Or uh, can we uh, club CP2 with some other paper and CP3 with some other paper? So can we do that? Uh, so I attempted CP2 and CP3 together. But I have seen people attempting CP2 combined with, let's say, a CS or CM paper, or let's say, even an advanced level paper. So that is something that I believe you can easily do. A paper like CP2, CP3 does not require a lot of practice, especially if you have attempted it previously. But yes, I don't think uh, you need to just give one of CP2 or CP3 like in a single attempt. You should easily look forward to completing, like attempting at least to be like either CP2 or CP3 plus one or CP2, CP3 together. I think that is the optim optimal uh, way you, you can utilize your attempt. Right, right. So uh, how much time should you allocate for CP2 mm -hmm. and CP3 separately? Uh, and you can also like mention weekly uh, as how much we should give mm -hmm. for CP2 separately and CP3 separately and how many months you gave for both the papers. Okay. Also, like in terms of my exam preparation, so my exam preparation was very driven towards practicing questions. So what I usually used to do is, let's say day one, I did CP2 paper one, day two would be CP2 paper two, day three, again, CP3. Then again, I would go back to paper one or CP2, paper two or CP2, uh, two, and then paper uh, CP3. So every day I used to, like, I think I started off, let's say 60 days in advance, and I used to, just focus on completing one mock paper every day that I study. So in total, I think I was able to do around nine to, I think around nine papers of CP3 as a practice and around 11 on CP2. Because I found CP2 to be a little challenging than CP1 since I had very limited exposure to Excel uh, at that time. So uh, definitely practice is very, very important because in CP2, uh, time uh, constraint is very uh, serious in paper one, spe uh, especially students generally don't finish the audit trail. So it's very important yeah. that we practice so that we understand how to manage the time. Uh, next. So next question is, uh, people generally say this thing once they clear CP2 and CP3 that these are very easy papers. But we actually know that the passing is not very high. Passing percentages mm -hmm. for CP3 specifically is not very high. So yeah. uh, how important, uh, like we have already discussed, it is mm -hmm. important to practice uh, both, not only CP2, but also CP3, because I've seen uh, many students, what they do is they just read the solution of CP3 and they sit for mm -hmm. the exam. And yeah. they don't yeah. practice That's writing. Cool. So that is very important. How important uh, was it for you? Also, firstly, answering whether CP2 and CP3 are easy papers. 
in terms of preparation yes they are easy because there is not a lot of content to go through over here it's just practicing past papers so it's easier to prepare for those but again to clear cp2 cp3 i think the past percentages are as per the as per all the like it's on very uh, similar terms compared to the other papers or even might even be a little lower so i think when you say it's easier i think it's easier to, it's better you say that it's easier to prepare but not easier to clear so that is an important aspect I I kind of I agree because I I have friends who've cleared even higher exams but they are literally still waiting to clear yeah. CP three or CP two you know because it's easy to prepare but mm -hmm. it's it can be very challenging on the exam day when you face Definitely. that right. exam yeah. Uh, so, yeah. I would request okay. all of you to please keep on uh, keep yourselves on mute and you all can just type it down in the chat box it will become easier for us. Okay, yes, Manchit, go ahead. Yeah, so adding on like. in cp3 please please focus on your writing style and ask people to review what you are writing because i had one of my friends like who was preparing for cp3 this september and since i already had cleared it beforehand so i was able to give him a lot of valuable input on that on how he should answer and i think that would have really helped him in his paper solving like he himself came up to me after a few after a few weeks and he was like those tips really helped or uh, like improve my answer style and what exactly was the thought process going in right so so again it's a, like if you go by the name of cp series it's communications focus on how good you communicate it to it what right. what knowledge is there in the books will be there in the books i think had books had only the knowledge being provided in the books been sufficient i think all of our seniors would have been able to clear cp series in the first attempt or in the second attempt but this is something that i think experienced professions would agree on me you don't really see i have seen people not clear cp1 even after three or four attempts so i think it's not because of a difference of knowledge i think they were far more knowledgeable to me it's just that whether you can adjust to the exam style that is being asked for right right uh so what is the different uh, what is difference what is the difference between cp2 and cp3 when you compare it with the traditional exams for that matter even cp1 mm -hmm. uh, what is the main difference which you felt while preparing for cp2 and cp3 so so the blunt answer to this question would be a paper like cm1 cm2 cs2 is pure hard work it's it's slogging yourself for four months with sums and practical solutions and going through the material conceptually but if you compare it with cp2 cp3 there is no major form concept that you need to grasp it's basically doing a lot of a lot lot of mocks a lot of mocks that you need to do and right. not just attempt a mock it's get it reviewed it is better to attempt two mocks and getting it reviewed rather than just attempting 10 mocks so i think that is very important right so it's very important to spe uh, especially in cp3 i will say that it's very very important to have someone to review your paper uh, and um, this thing i feel that even if you clear the exam um, you still have you still have to have that ability to review someone's paper so that is again exactly. very important that yeah. only comes when you have practiced a lot right so right. Uh, whenever you are getting your paper reviewed uh just mm -hmm. don't go to someone who is uh, who has cleared cp3 um uh, maybe they have cleared with just a very small margin go with someone who actually has some uh, knowledgeable tips because cp3 if you are listening to any tips and any tricks will not help you so it's very important yeah. to be very specific in those papers so that is again very important that you have to have a good peer review you cannot just go to any one to have the paper checked right so Absolutely. very good point I think we have a few questions in the chat box as well. Uh, so, sure. is it logical to attempt CP one after clearing CM one CM CB papers, or should one clear all CM CS papers before CP one? Same mm -hmm. for CP two and CP three. Oh, uh, I mean, if I would have been like the person who had this choice i would definitely look at completing cs2 and cm2 earlier in my career simply because as i would progress in my career i would be able to devote lesser and lesser time to preparation cp1 you might be able to cover let's say if, let's say instead of preparing for 6 months you can do it over 8 months devoting let's say 2 to 3 hours each 
but a paper like cm2 or cs2 which has a lot of practical sums in it and even excel and r i think it's better to get them out of the way first before you go on go on to see a paper like cp1 because if if let's say touch if let's say god forbid your cp1 does not go well i think it could it has the potential to you know demotivate you in a way so i think it's better to get rid of cm cs and cb series beforehand right right absolutely so you should first clear all your cm cs papers because obviously it helps you all, uh, uh, as well yeah. in some parts for cp1 um right then uh, someone says that do cp1 cp2 cp3 require work experience to clear or like is it recommended to have work experience for mm -hmm. clearing cp1 and to for the exams okay so basically they are asking do we need work experience before clearing or uh, for clearing these papers so i would give an, an answer from two perspectives over here firstly from my personal experience i gave cp2 cp3 in, my, in the third year of my undergrad and i gave cp1 during the uh, after joining my first job basically like within the first four months so i don't think it's unachievable to give it without work experience of course it's going to be a little more difficult because you don't have that formal experience that would help you know in your improve in improving your communications so that can be a disadvantage but i think that is not something that would prevent you from clearing it uh, but yes if you just ask me whether work experience would help i think especially for cp2 cp3 work experience will help will help For CP one, it's just about how much hard work you put into the put in for that paper. Right. So I think you are absolutely correct when you are saying that it does not matter much, but definitely, ah, uh, if you are going uh, and studying to uh, on your own, mm -hmm. if you are pre self preparing for the exams, then definitely it might be a little overwhelming for you. Uh, all yeah. these three papers, ah, mm -hmm. uh, without work experience, but definitely work experience helps you to understand the technicality. uh behind yeah. the papers i think uh, a good example to explain this point further would be let's say when you are attempting cp2 as let's say somebody who don't have who doesn't have experience you don't right. really understand what is the uh, what is the importance of a check which is something i never got when i attempted cp2 like right. i knew a check is there in the file but what exactly is the reason for having a check is something i never even thought about but right. having having worked for let's say 6 months or half a year now i know how crucial checks are and what exactly is the guiding logic behind the check so right now if you give me a file it would take me barely half an hour or one hour to create let's say 10 15 checks which could be the right checks that i need to provide in that file but if you right. talk about giving it as a fresh i think it's important to understand the importance of what you are doing i think it's okay. important that you ask question from mentors and your trainers right. is possible and uh, definitely time is a very big factor so being a mm -hmm. student you have a lot of time to study so that Absolutely. definitely has the biggest advantage uh, being a student and giving these papers uh, because with job you just have a few uh, like hours but being yeah. a student you have your entire day with yourself so that's Absolutely. definitely one of the major uh, things over here All right. So, do we have any questions? You all can just uh, simply put it down in the chat box. Are there any more questions? Okay. So, any final points you want to add, Manchit? Uh, not not much. I think I have tried to summarize what I have learned from my experience while preparing the CP series exams. I think I hope. this proves helpful for all of you but if you do have any questions please do reach out to me or shivangi ji i think shivangi ji would be the more appropriate person to answer your questions but if you feel uh, but if you want to reach out to me i would be happy to answer and take up any queries that you have in the future so so thanks for having me and i hope you all had something to learn during the session hopefully thank you so much manchit it was really an insightful session honestly and now uh, so thank you so much we'll be having you very soon for the sp level papers hopefully of course right hopefully. so okay Fingers thank crossed. you okay so thank you so much uh, all of you for joining in for today thank you